So why did we choose Citizen as our NEA book read for Mineral Point in our part of Southwestern Wisconsin? Having youth librarians sitting at the table, it was really interesting to hear them recommend um, choose this book over all the others in large part because the concept of citizenship is accessible to everyone. It's something that we're starting to learn about in elementary school. And it's something that most of us have in common. Um, and it's interesting to revisit this dictionary definition in light of, of current events and see the first definition talking about owing allegiance and being entitled to protection. Um, so we really started at this point of accessibility, knowing that um, a large part of our population um, were a homogenous, primarily white population. So this book would be presenting new ideas and concepts to many of us. So we started there and then zooming in, thinking about Wisconsin. Um, unfortunately, our, our statistics aren't great, even though we have a, a legacy of progressivism um, and the Wisconsin idea. Um, we are on it, many of the statistics, many of the charts, the least racially integrated of 50 states. Um, and at the end of the presentation, I'll point you to a number of these resources where you can read, unfortunately, about our, our very low rankings and the work that we still have to do. Uh, zooming in to Iowa at County and our, our surrounding counties, we are predominantly white but we have populations of Hispanic Americans, Hispanic um, immigrants who are invisible in some ways, which is a concept that, that Rankin talks about. There were black people here there, that more than are now. There were Native Americans here before any of us. Where are they now? So thinking about this concept of belonging and identity um, we thought that hearing from Rankin in light of, of previous current events, it seemed timely and we had no way of anticipating what would happen this summer after the May death of George Floyd. I thought it was really interesting watching that clip from the PBS NewsHour that in the copy they showed of pages 134, 135, there are more names on the list in the book now of black people um, killed by police. So as she said, this could, book could have been written yesterday, um, which again was a momentous day in, in racial justice current events. Um, so we thought there would be a lot to talk about here and a lot of sort of envelopes to push. And so we wanted to share with you tonight, and again, this information will be on our website um, and we'll be promoting it heavily through social media, our newsletter. Um, we made the front page of the Democrat Tribune today. I'm not sure if we're the back page of the Dodgeville Chronicle. I haven't seen that yet, um, but this is all information that we started trickling out in March, right before the quarantine started. So we've had to pick up um, and, and and co copy and paste a lot of things um, that we had planned and, and create new activities uh, in lieu of things that are no longer possible currently. But these are some of the ways you can join the NEA Big Read. You can read the book. Um, that is primarily what our grant dollars went toward. Um, we have many more copies to spare, so don't feel like you have to share your copy. Um, and we are increasingly reaching out, broadening the, the scope of program participation so that we can make sure anybody who wants a copy of this book can get one. And we'll talk more about where you can access them. Um, you can participate in upcoming events and I'm gonna go into those in greater detail. So the books are available at Shake Rag Alley in Mineral Point. This is a photo of our little free library right outside the entrance to Shake Rag Alley. We're going to keep this stocked through November, which is when our NEA wraps up, our big read wraps up. Um, you get a bookmark with, you, with your book. And if you can see it, I am modeling the citizen button that Jackie put together for us. And there's a jar of those in the library as well. Um, we have all of this, the bookmarks, books, and buttons at the Mineral Point Public Library and the Mineral Point Chamber of Commerce. 
the Platteville Public Library is finalizing the date of their rescheduled book discussion, but they do currently have copies. Um, if you would like more copies, if you find the little free library empty, um, email us, call us. We're open right currently seven days a week. Let us know you'd like books, more books. If you'd like to host a book discussion, please be in touch and let us know. Starting this weekend, which is why we're doing our kickoff now, um, we're on the eve of our writing retreat, which starts tomorrow, and two of our featured events of the retreat were specifically planned because of our NEA Big Read. Thanks to our partners at Columbia College Chicago and Hypertext Magazine and Studio, which is a social justice nonprofit in Chicago, we have first off um, a free craft talk given by Eric May, um, the author of Bedrock Faith. He will be presenting this free talk on Saturday, writing about race. And Eric was named the 21st century author for the Chicago Public Library Foundation's Charles Sandberg Awards. This is the first time he's participating in our writing retreat and we're really excited to welcome him starting with our uh, retreat kickoff tomorrow morning. Then on Sunday, Philip Hartigan, also Columbia College faculty, will be giving a free lecture on Baldwin and Paris. Philip is an adjunct professor in creative writing, and he, every January, this lucky guy, goes to Paris and teaches a creative writing program on James Baldwin and Ernest Hemingway. Um, he will be talking Sunday, again, a free presentation, virtual via Zoom, on the influence of Paris on Baldwin. He emigrated there in 1948, lived there for about 10 years, and it'll be interesting to hear Philip talk about ways his time there led him to reconnect with the United States and the growing civil rights movement. So right away, you have two opportunities this weekend to hear from um, smart people talking about themes relevant to citizen. And then next week, starting Thursday, we're going to start a seven week chapter book club. Shake Rag Alley is hosting this book club. Um, it's a deep dive into each of the seven chapters so that we can just spend time with the text and the art um, in each, each chapter. Um, I find it interesting that Claudia Rankin said that she didn't choose the art and she was heavily involved in every aspect of this book down to the paper weight and the design of the book itself. Um, she didn't choose the art to illustrate the chapters. It's to have a conversation with the concepts. It's to give you a break from what you've just been reading. Stop, look at what you're looking at and, and engage with that. And thanks to Jackie, we have a ton of information on our website that helps to explain, helps to interpret what we're seeing on the page. So if you'd like to join, you can join for one of these, all seven, whatever you'd like. Um, but we do ask you to register so we can send you the Zoom links. So this too is on our, our website, the NEA Big Read page. Another opportunity to join with fellow mineral pointers and talk about the concepts in the book are on Friday, October 9th, the Mineral Point Public Library will be holding an in-person talk. They hope to do this if the weather cooperates in Library Park. They ask that people bring chairs to help with social distancing. And in the event of bad weather, they'll move into the community room of City Hall. So here's an opportunity to meet in person, downtown Mineral Point, um, thanks to the library for uh, arranging that. And then the next day, our monthly Driftless Poets Workshop is gonna be dedicated to a discussion of Citizen as well as a, an open mic format to let our poets share their work inspired by or in response to Citizen. So that's on Saturday, October 10th. And I mentioned we have Platteville is rescheduling their talk. We'd had several other libraries um, in the spring committing to book discussions. And because we have through the end of November, I did that on purpose to give us all more time to schedule things. The COVID pandemic has closed a lot of doors um, to some of our events. Literally, the public, the, the Mineral Point Opera House has closed its doors. They were going to be a tremendous partner for us in hosting our keynote and hosting our kickoff and hosting a weekly film series throughout April. 
and they've closed their doors to the public due to the public gathering restrictions. So in lieu of those things, we're, we're finding ways, uh, different ways to engage with the book. So that's the, all of the currently scheduled book discussions. Then moving toward art, we are dedicating our monthly women's art party in October to one of the artists featured in, um, in Citizen. Using women's magazines from the 1930s through the 1970s, our own Carol Spellich is going to lead us in a project generating work reflective of collagist Wangechi Mutu. Um, and her, one of her works was featured, I believe, in the PBS um, video that we watched. She's a Kenyan born artist, educated in Great Britain and the United States, and Carol will share more about her and give us an opportunity to engage in, in this type of art, the collage that she practices. So that is October 21st. This is scheduled to be in person in the Lynn Pavilion. Um, and so registration will be required for that as well. We're really excited um, to have two youth programs currently scheduled. We wholeheartedly acknowledge that Citizen is not a book for young people. Um, so we are not handing these out to elementary school students. Um, several of the high school and middle school uh, teachers have asked for copies. Um, and there, we're hopeful there will be an opportunity to program some things for that older youth audience. But in the short term, the Mineral Point Library will be offering a recorded story time by Candy Basting um, next week, September 30th. And they've been developing grab and go kits throughout the, the pandemic since they opened. So watch for that on their website and social media, and we will promote it as well when we, when we get the title that they'll be working with. And then we um, are excited to be collaborating with Mineral Point Elementary School kindergartners. Um, the kindergarten teachers and Mickey Upana, the librarian, have selected the title, I Am Every Good Thing by Derek Barnes, um, which is a really lovely, um, a cheerleading of of the beauty of black youth and and so we're we're working with the teachers to develop an art project that will be a, a self-portrait project and we're looking forward to be able to share those self-portraits that result um, in a, a slideshow that will live on our website later on um, Big reason that we're excited for these events to be moving forward is because in April, the libraries had planned to have an in-person visit by Miranda and Baptiste Paul, a uh, husband and wife um, children's book author writing team who were going to come to Mineral Point in person to share story time at the library and go into the schools to talk to to youth about what they write about. And so um, that has tentatively been rescheduled for April of 2021, but we really wanted to be have some sort of youth component to the Big Read as well. Um, then we have our keynote panel. So it was with great sadness that when the restrictions on public gatherings were implemented, and the Opera House closed, we realized there was no way that we were gonna be able to host the audience that we had anticipated for Claudia Rankin herself. We had invited her to come to Mineral Point. She accepted, she had her plane ticket. We were working on all the travel logistics for her to come here. Um, and we were really excited and then extremely sad and disappointed that all of these plans went pear-shaped as they say. Um, and we really took that time at that moment to revisit our goals for this program. And there had been a lot of logistics involved with her travel. A lot more fundraising was going to need to be done. And when everything was happening with the economy, we just decided, you know what, let's just focus closer to home. And um, we, we did not go further in discussions with her about having her do a Zoom talk or anything like that, because it's still, it's still a lot of money. So we wanted to be smart about our grant and make sure that we are going to be able to cover all of our costs related to the books and additional programs that we wanted to be offered for free. And by the way, all of this that I've been talking about is free. 
Um, currently, the Women's Art Party has a, a, a dollar amount to it, but we're going to, to waive that um, so that we can share that activity with people as well at no cost. So in lieu of our keynote with Claudia Rankin, again, our friends at Hypertext Magazine and Studio in Chicago have come through to help us put together this incredible panel um, of authors um, speaking to the topic of citizen author and the American story. Um, the timing of this, you'll see, is the Sunday before one of the most, if not the most momentous elections in US history. And I think it'll be a fascinating time and opportunity to hear from a diversity of voices talking about um, their role as, as authors with their diverse backgrounds. Um, they include um, authors with Pakistani background, Palestinian, an author with a black father, an Irish American mom, um, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, community activist. So it's really gonna be um, an incredible afternoon, Sunday, starting at 3 p.m. Um, we'll be visiting again virtually with this fantastic lineup of authors and thinkers. In terms of our website resources, I wanted to let you all know that we do have the recordings from four of our five virtual community conversations, which started on June 19th. This was our attempt um, right after, you know, in the wake of George Floyd's death and the protests that started, um, we didn't wanna, we wanted to not lose momentum and we, we knew that there were important things to be talking about. Um, and so before our big read kickoff, we started the series of conversations. Um, again, the June 19th um, conversation with Brian Benford was our first one and I did not have the presence of mind to record that. So that's why that one is not here. Um, but these other four are there and they include information about regional black history. Um, Dr. Fox um, from Mineral Point talking about systemic racism in healthcare. A middle school teacher from Madison talking about systemic racism in education. And Professor Michael Thornton talking about race and policing. So, um, and with each of these um, talks, Again, we had a wonderful amount of uh, resources that went along with them. So this is one more way that you can engage with the ideas and the themes of citizen, um, very current. Um, these, are, these are still issues that are, are gonna be, we're gonna be talking about them for a long time. And lastly, I mentioned, I wanted to share um, this incredible amount of information that Jackie, um, my partner in crime on this program, put together on our website. Um, all of these um, links, the, where you see a plus sign, that's an accordion menu that drops down with many more links than you're seeing right here. Um, so please use our website as a resource. There are numerous guides reading guides, teaching guides to citizens. So if you pick it up and you wonder what the heck am I reading? What am I think? What, it, what, it was, what is this all about? Um, then you can, um, this, this will help you. It's helped me immensely and I still have, have a lot to read. Um, there's, like I said, this fantastic link section to the artwork and video referenced in citizens. So you can engage with the artists at a greater level. Um, there is no information um, in, in the book about the artists. Um, so if you're looking for a caption to explain to you what you're looking at, it's not there. So please let us be a resource for you as you're reading through the book. Um, there's additional information about Claudia Rankin herself. There are more videos of Claudia speaking. And then lastly, I think this section is really interesting. What does it mean to be a citizen? These links are so full of history. It's, it's really a lot of history specific to citizenship, um, timelines of US history. It's phenomenal. And I want to thank Jackie again for all the work she did on this. Um, below, uh, if you scroll further down on our website, you'll find a racial dot map, which is sadly illuminating. Um, it will show you the concentration of non-white populations in our country. And as Jackie has, has reminded me, the greatest percentage of black populations in our part of the state are prisons. So 
that's that's profound. And again, we ask these questions of where are the black people? How do we how do we engage with them? Um, there's there's a lot to think about and and discuss. There's the racial integration rankings that um, that we've talked about and several. There are four videos of history lectures um, that are also very insightful. And I encourage you to to take a look at those and and let those be guides as well to help with context. While not officially a part of our NEA Big Read, I did want to mention that the Mining and Rollo Jameson Museum has begun its three-part series on slavery in Platteville with James Hibbard of um, UW Platteville. The first um, lecture was this month, but can be accessed on their website. Um, that one was free. The October lecture is free. And then in October, or sorry, November, it's part of their annual meeting. So for a fee or the friends membership, you can, you can access that as, one, as well. And just the first part was extremely insightful. Um, I am still working to, I hope to have before the end of November, or maybe it goes into winter and we continue this conversation, um, accessing information through our Mineral Point archives, our Mineral Point Historical Society, Pendarvis. There's still more to the story of Mineral Point citizenship that I personally want to know, and I'd love to share in partnership with those terrific historic, historical resources. So as I mentioned, um, a lot of doors were closed to um, programs and partnerships that we were looking forward to sharing with everyone as part of this NEA Big Read, but we are still working to develop additional events um, beyond what I've shared with you tonight. Um, the wonderful thing about Zoom is that it really turns out to be um, one of our Folk School Alliance peers has used the word democratizing. You don't have to leave your home to engage with us on the NEA Big Read. So if you have family and friends around the country who want to read the book, who want to discuss this with you, you could have a friends and family book discussion by Zoom and we're, we're happy to share the book with you. So um, please watch our website, follow our social media channels if you don't already, sign up for our newsletter um, and stay engaged with us and please be in touch with any ways that we can help answer questions or facilitate um, your enjoyment of the NEA Big Read.